Well, thank you very much for having me. It's, uh, it's been quite a, a while since I've been to Minnesota. I think last time we were here, we played the Target Center in the summertime. <laughs> now I'm like eight years old, then I'm getting old. Uh, but yeah, so good to be here um, and talk to you. Hopefully, I can uh, fill you in on some things about my life and my experiences, maybe inspire you all to do some things. Uh, anyone here interested in like the entertainment industry at all? Well, that's good. So I can I can force y'all not to go into it because it's very very <laughs> it, it's it's hard. But um, yeah, and then any uh, space fans out there? Ow, ow, not as many people. Okay, then I won't talk about that as much. Uh, Aww, no. <laughs> so I guess we should just start at the beginning. Um, I was born in a place uh, called Laurel, Mississippi. Anyone from Mississippi here? Didn't think so. Uh, what? Really? No. Liar. <laughs> Liar. Uh, and, you know, I was from, you know, a real small town, I grew up in the country, and uh, back in Mississippi you really didn't have much inspiration to go into the entertainment industry or anything like that, because no one came to your town to perform. Uh, so I grew up just, you know, we were like a sports town, so as long as you played football, baseball, you were fine. And that wasn't until I moved to a place called Clinton, Mississippi, which is like southern, I mean, central Mississippi, uh, where the town was just all based on music. Uh, you know, sports was okay, but like, if you didn't sing, I mean, then no one liked you. Be funny. So uh, that was how I got introduced to music, and you know, all my best friends sang, and uh, and really didn't take it too serious. I was, you know, singing chorus uh, in church and all that type of stuff. And it wasn't until uh, I got a call when I was 16 years old, and it was, I remember it very vividly because it was my homecoming dance. It was the day of that. And I get a call from this little 14-year-old kid with curly hair, um, <laughs> Justin Timberlake. <laughs> I'll just say the name and y'all can scream, Justin Timberlake. <laughs> so I get a call from him when, when I was 16, he was 14. He's like, you know what, we're gonna put this band together. Um, I didn't even really know him at the time. Uh, we actually had a same vocal coach. And he's like, we're gonna put this group together in Orlando uh, and we're looking for a bass singer. And I was like, well, I got a little voice, so I'll be your bass singer. And uh, so I went down to Orlando like immediately that next day just to check it out. I thought it would just be a nice free trip to Disney World. And um, ended up just falling in love with the guys. And I mean, just, it was amazing. Immediately when we, we sang together, uh, we just hit it off. And it was just this magical like moment that I was like, oh my gosh, this is what I'm gonna do the rest of my life. Uh, so immediately we started, you know, uh, getting together our music. We were an acapella band uh, because we couldn't afford music and uh, so we used our voices just to you know, sing acapella. Our biggest goal was to be able to like perform at Disney World or Universal Studios. That's like, that was our goal at the time. Uh, got a little bigger. We, we had no clue. Uh, so, you know, for the first year it was pretty, it was pretty uh, slow. Um, you know, we had two of the guys on the Mickey Mouse Club so, uh, you know, that was cool. We had a like, cool fan base already in, in place and you know we thought things were going to take off pretty quickly but no it didn't we sat on our i mean we didn't sit on our bus we were rehearsing a lot but we sat there in orlando for a year and no one would want to sign us to any record label we had an independent label there in orlando and we had no support whatsoever because our record label was transcontinental records um who was owned by lou perlman i don't know if y'all know this lou perlman guy he was our first uh record president who's in jail right now for embezzling about 300 million dollars. Yeah, he got his. <laughs> he got his. So, uh, we, were, we were also on the same level as the Baxter Boys, so we were always known as, uh, yeah, hey, I'm a fan. I can admit it now, I like the Baxter Boys. Um, so, we were, we were the, you know, the red-headed stepchild at the record label. No one even knew who we were. We were called B5 on the records. Uh, because no one wanted to find, uh, let anyone know that there was a new music group that could compete with their boys. So, um, we did a lot of uh, different performances for different record labels, and not one single label wanted us at all. So, the only label that we had interest was a uh, label in Germany. So, we shipped out to Munich, Germany, signed with a label out there, and spent a couple of years uh, perfecting our craft. Like, because we, it was not good. Our first stuff, 